with me right now are four super simple redstone clocks and I'm going to show you how to build them, how they work and how to use them. Welcome to Barely Functional. All these clocks work on Bedrock and Java Edition. I'm going to demonstrate them in Java Edition, but there are some subtle differences in one of them specifically uh, that is uh, that makes it different on Bedrock, but I'll explain that when we get there. Anyway, to get started, we have the most basic repeater clock. Now, this one uh, is, you know, super simple to understand. It's just sending a pulse in a, in a, in a loop. To build it, uh, you could probably just look at the screenshot, but I'm going to show you anyway. So you start by placing two redstone dust there and two redstone dust one block away in two lines like that. You place a repeater in t uh, facing this way and then a, a repeater facing backwards on the other side. They these repeaters can be either of the way around, doesn't really matter, but uh, they need to be facing like in a circle. So if you follow the redstone dust or the redstone signal, it goes around in a circle. But powering this clock is not as simple as it may seem. So if I just power it normally with a torch or with, let's say, a button, like so, uh, it will kind of just stay on. And that's because it is uh, the signal is being sent in and then across and then back around and then it's looping, but it's like, you know, constantly looping, so it never turns off. Uh, but that's because uh, the signal was too long basically. So, if to, to send a shorter signal through the system, I'm going to first turn this clock off, but then I'm going to, uh, let's just say, uh, use an observer to enter a signal into there. And there you go. Uh, it is a pretty quick redstone clock, but this, the, one of the benefits to this clock is that it is very easily adjustable. So, if we extend the delay on these repeaters and like reset the clock quickly, uh, we can actually uh, go ahead and trigger it quickly and it will make this uh, timing uh, basically looping the signal around and around and constantly powering and un unpowering and you know, you, you get the idea. This is pretty simple to understand that the signal is going around in the circle. Now another good thing about this uh, clock is that it is extendable by further than the uh, the initial size so if you want a longer redstone clock you can actually add a whole bunch of, of repeaters in a circle like this uh, extending each and every one of them add two redstone dust on the end uh, making sure the repeaters are again going in a circle and uh, if we power this it should send a signal in a circle so this should clearly demonstrate uh, how this actually works the signal is just traveling in a circle uh, another interesting thing about this is that it, you can actually adjust the length of the signal. Uh, so, if I hold this for longer, uh, it will make the signal longer. Of course, I can't wait, I can't hold it until it comes all the way back around, otherwise it's just gonna hold itself again. So if I keep holding this signal until it comes all the way back around, it's just gonna, you know, hold the signal and never go down. So that's one of the downsides to this clock, I guess, but the main downside to this clock is not that. It is actually, uh, it can very easily get messed up. So reloading the world, unloading chunks and stuff like that will very easily mess this clock up. And that uh, is not good. We don't want this clock messing up whenever the world reloads. Uh, so that's one of the biggest downsides to this clock. But most of the other ones actually solve this problem. So we're going to, I'm going to explain that when we get there. But so one way you can actually turn this clock on and off it is with uh, some pistons. So if we go ahead and let's see, grab a solid block. We'll just use white wool to demonstrate here. If we do this uh, and power them both, you will you'll see that the, this block is powered the same time it is pushed in. This repeater will power the block, still creating that loop. Um, so it still works exactly the same, but turning it off is simple. You just pull these pistons back and, uh, you know, this, this block is removed. So when the signal comes around here, it doesn't get sent back and it just turns the clock off. Now this clock works 100% the same in Bedrock Edition. Uh, this system to turn it on and off also works except for the triggering of the pistons. You have to trigger it slightly differently like this so that both pistons are powered because the way I did it before was using quasi connectivity to power the bottom piston, which is not possible so in Bedrock. So uh, if you want to know more about quasi connectivity, I have a video explaining every single redstone component and how redstone works. 
uh, the absolute basics up in the top right corner if you want to go watch that. Uh, there are chapters in the description so you can skip to the part about quasi connectivity. Next up we have the comparator clock. This, I don't know what the name is for this one, but I call it the comparator clock because it uses a comparator rather than just repeaters. And to build this one, it's super simple. All you need is a comparator, redstone dust going around from the front to the side. This can go either way to the left or to the right, but only to one of the sides. You need to toggle the comparator onto subtract mode and then flick the lever or give it any sort of power of level of 15 that could be a redstone torch that could be a redstone block and it will work uh either way uh, any anything that gives it a power level of 15 so as you can see uh this is uh, a bit more complicated so it this clock the differences between this one and the last one is that it uh the amount of time that it is on for is exactly the same as the amount of time it is off for so if uh so different, the, the, one of the differences between this clock and the last one is that, well, you know, it uses a comparator and just this basic setup of it doesn't actually turn the redstone dust off completely, except for this one. Uh, if I do slash tick rate uh, one, so basically what I've done is slowed the game and how fast it processes stuff down. That's why I'm moving so slowly here and that's why the redstone is working so slowly. So as you can see, what is actually happening is that the the comparator here is outputting the 15 signal that it is getting from the lever behind. It will output 15 right there, send it around, and it is in subtract mode. And so what that does is takes the, when it gets here it's a 13, it takes 13 from 15, giving us 2, and as you can see it switches to 2, outputting 2, it goes uh, from 2 to one and doesn't reach all the way back <clears throat> and then and then it minus zero from 15 uh and then it instead outputs you know zero minus 15 is uh 15 so it does it repeats it outputs a 15 minuses gets two minuses that gets 15 minuses gets two uh, minuses that gets 15 so i'm gonna speed this uh slash tick slash tick rate 20 i'm going to speed the game back up to normal speed again and uh yeah so as you can see this dust actually never turns off and uh, this 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 clock repeats every two redstone ticks uh so it changes it takes one redstone tick to change from 15 to 2 then another redstone tick to change from 2 back to 15 so two redstone ticks per repeat re repetition of the clock but you can actually extend this just like the repeater clock I as explained before just like that as you can see yeah as I added the repeaters it slows the clock down and another difference between this clock and this one over here is that this always has the exact same amount of time on that it has off it uh yeah as you can see it is half for half of the time it is on half of the time it is off and once you add repeaters it no longer does that like fan funky subtract thing where only this dust is zero very basic clock uh now moving on to this one prob an arguably even more basic clock this is the observer clock so to build this one, all you need is an, uh, two observers and a piston, or a sticky piston. So you have two observers, one facing that way, one facing this way. Make sure they're like diagonally on to each other. You piston there and you toggle the piston on to turn it on and toggle it off to turn it off. Now you can do it by hand as well, but for some reason, I'm not actually sure why this happens. If you place it uh, just there, it will only happened half as fast uh, and uh, but if you push it over with a piston it will happen double speed not sure why but that's just how it is so I suggest using a sticky piston so basically how this works is unbelievably simple this observer when you toggle it on this one will detect that one changing output a signal but then that changes the state of this block making this block detect that one and then outputting a signal detecting there, there, there goes back and forth this detects this this detects this this detects this so on uh, and this happens in java edition once every uh two redstone ticks so it toggles on and off once every two redstone ticks one tick on one tick off uh, and in Bedrock Edition, it's supposed to happen at the same speed, but it is actually a bug that, uh, 
that observers don't happen as fast and it is actually half the speed that it is in Java edition. So in Bedrock, it would be happening once every four redstone ticks. <clears throat> now this clock is once again extend expandable, but it is slightly different. Uh, it works slightly different once you expand it. So if you want to expand it, you can put a lot of observers in a massive loop facing into one another. As you can see, uh, they must be facing into each other. So this one is watching, they're all watching the one before it, as you can see. So this one is watching that one, this one is watching that one. Specifically around corners, you have to make sure that they are watching the one before it. So this one is watching the one before it, this one is watching the one before it, this one is watching the one before it, and so on. But yeah, uh, same way to turn it off, you just pull one of the observers out, any one of the observers really. You can pull the corners out, you can pull anything out, and uh, you know, it will, it will do it. It will uh, turn it to turn it off. However, one weird thing about this one is that once turning it back on, you actually get this weird thing where the observer that is pushed back uh, detects the one before at the same time this detects that. So uh, you kind of get two signals going through. As you can see, two of the observers are actually lit up at any one time. But that's just a weird quirk. One way you can fix that is by instead of having a an, an observer there, you instead have a note block so that the note block because it doesn't detect uh, the one in front of it it will only be detected by the one behind it and it you know just loops once instead of twice this note block will be making noises though so you have to put like I don't know some so any item any block on top of it and it will stop making the noises that's a pretty simple one and uh, I'm gonna explain one cool use case you can do with this one because it is actually uh, pretty well used so if you have a line of observers coming out of the clock, so as you can see, these observers are facing into the clock down here. Uh, the clock's still going to run independently, but as the clock comes around, the this top line of the observers will also detect that, uh, giving a pulse upwards and into the block directly above it. And so if I add... I'm going to add a line of blocks so that it doesn't hard power the the lamps it's going to power through instead it will do it will turn the lights on in a quick succession just like that look at that the lamps will stay on for longer than the observer powers them for because they do have a, a cooldown but it is a very cool effect and uh, you know looks cool you can use it in i don't know some flashy signs or something maybe you want uh to draw attention to a place this can do it very nicely uh, but yeah that's how it works. Moving on to the, our last clock, we have Hopper Clock. You may have heard the, the phrase Hopper Clock in, uh, referring to a different clock, uh, That's that being the Etho Hopper Clock, but this Hopper Clock is not that. Uh, the Etho Hopper Clock is much more complex and will probably require its own video to explain. And to build this one, basically what you do is you, you have to at least grab two hoppers, uh, you gotta face them into each other, and you throw an item into one of the hoppers. And that should start the clock. All you need to do is read a comparator out of it and it will do a thing because the item is being transferred back and forth between the two hoppers. Um, the one I had demonstrated was a four hopper design. So obviously uh, you would, instead of having two, make sure you have four all facing into each other. I have a texture pack that allows me to see the direction of the hoppers, but you can just look at the little spouts underneath to see which way they're facing. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, the make sure the hoppers are all facing in a circle. This works the exact same on Bedrock, so nothing different in this one. Uh, and yeah, this is a very basic to understand. This one I don't think will ever break uh, when unloading and loading chunks. Uh, but you can actually extend it again. So you just add more hoppers. The more hoppers, the longer the clock extends for. So if I put one hopper in there... As you can see, it kind of goes, it takes a while to go all the way around and then back, and then takes a while to go all the way around and then back. So, yeah, the, another, this is another clock you can use to kind of, I guess, do that funky lamp lighting up thing, but a lot slower. Uh, so, this clock will be a lot slower than the observer clocks I've seen before, uh, as you can see, sending the signal across a lot slower. But that is basically. Uh, that clock, there's nothing else to talk about really with this one. It is unbelievably simple. So yeah, that is all four of these super basic clocks explained. Uh, this is the 
use cases of any of these could be if you want to do something a lot of times really quickly or a lot of times uh, every time frame or so something every once in a while maybe so so something uh, that automatically does it after a certain interval uh, maybe you want I don't know one of those flashy signs so for example if you want um, to make a sign that says something that draws a lot of attention and creates probably a lot of lag on your server I don't know, you could use one of these clocks to make this. Uh, basically what I've got going on here is a wall of observers that are all hooked up to each other in an order that uh, is, you know, tr triggered by this clock down here of this basic uh, comparator clock. And it triggers all of them in a diagonal sort of shape going up. Uh, and I've got, it, I've got the whole wall hooked up here so I can actually change this to whatever uh to whatever i want so if i want to change this to a uh a c for example i could just take that out and replace this with a c just like that and it will still light up perfectly uh, if you want to save materials obviously you could just only use only remove all of the hopper uh, the, the observers that you don't need uh but for this you know i've got all of them hooked up just like that subscribe if you haven't done that already this is the first proper episode of Barely Functional. So yes, yeah, so basic redstone circuits, how to use them, and you'll see that redstone clocks, even though I didn't go over too many use cases in this video, you'll see that lots of other circuits actually use tiny versions of a redstone clock or something similar uh, in them. And so that's so this is the most basic one to learn first. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you got something out of it, subscribe, comment what you're gonna do with what you're gonna do once you. Uh, why you wanted to learn redstone, what you want to build, mini games, maybe it's farms, maybe it's something else. Uh, let me know down in the comments and I'll see you in the next one where we go over pulse extenders.